Chapter sixteen of The Life of Benjamin Franklin. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Life of Benjamin Franklin by Samuel G. Goodrich. Chapter sixteen Franklin reappointed agent of the Court of Great Britain. Visits Germany and France. Returns to Philadelphia appointed delegate to congress interview with lord howe sent as ambassador to france asked to be recalled chosen president of the supreme council of philadelphia death character the disputes between the proprietaries and the assembly which had for a long time subsided again revived at the election for a new assembly in seventeen sixty four the friends of the proprietaries made great exertions to keep out all those of the opposite party they obtained a small majority in the city of philadelphia and franklin lost the seat which he had now held for fourteen years on the meeting of the assembly it appeared that there was still a majority of franklin's friends he was again appointed agent of the provinces of the court of great britain his enemies were sadly vexed at this appointment and made a solemn protest against it which they wished to have entered upon the journals this however was refused and it was consequently published in the newspapers it drew from him a spirited reply the opposition to his reappointment seems to have greatly affected his feelings as it came from men with whom he had been long connected both in public and private life in his last publication he took a pathetic leave of pennsylvania i am now he says to take leave perhaps the last leave of the country i love and in which i have spent the greatest part of my life esto perpetua i wish every kind of prosperity to my friends and i forgive my enemies during his residence in england he consulted with unremitting industry the best interests of his native country he was everywhere received with respect on account of his reputation as a writer and philosopher in seventeen sixty six he made a visit to holland and germany and received the greatest marks of attention from men of science in the following year he travelled into france where he was received with much kindness and favour he became acquainted with a number of literary men and was introduced to the king louis the fifteenth difficulties had now commenced between great britain and her provinces in america franklin was unwearied in his efforts to bring about a reconciliation he had frequent interviews with lord howe and lord chatham and other distinguished english statesmen who entertained for him the highest respect and esteem most of the time during his present residence in england was occupied in these vain efforts the violent conduct of the parent state drove the colonies to war and franklin returned to america in the year seventeen seventy five the day after his return he was elected by the legislature of pennsylvania a delegate to congress not long after his election a committee was appointed consisting of mr lynch mr harrison and himself to visit the camp at cambridge they here united their efforts with those of the commander-in-chief to convince the soldiers of the necessity of remaining in the field and persevering in the cause of their country when lord howe came to america in seventeen seventy six with powers to effect an accommodation with the colonists a correspondence on the subject took place between him and dr franklin john adams edward rutledge and dr franklin were afterwards appointed to wait upon lord howe and learn the extent of his powers these were found to be confined to the liberty of granting pardons on submission the americans at that time would not thank the king for a thousand pardons and the interview terminated without effecting anything towards a reconciliation dr franklin was an earnest advocate for the entire separation of the colonies from great britain and his writings upon the subject had great influence on the public mind in seventeen seventy six he was president of a convention which assembled for the purpose of establishing a new form of government for the state of pennsylvania in the later part of this year he was appointed to assist mr silas dean in managing the affairs of the colonies at the court of france no one could have rendered more service to the united states in this situation than dr franklin his character was much honoured in france and as a philosopher he was held in very high esteem he was received with respect by all the celebrated literary men of the day and this respect naturally extended itself to all classes his political negotiations were the greatest importance to his native country when the independence of the united states was acknowledged by great britain franklin became desirous of returning home 
the infirmities of age and disease had fallen upon him and the situation of his country rendered his services no longer indispensably necessary he applied to congress to be recalled and mr jefferson was appointed to succeed him in seventeen eighty five in september of the same year franklin arrived in philadelphia he was shortly after chosen a member of the supreme council for the city and was soon elected president of the same body for the next three years franklin still devoted himself to public business and to his political and philosophical studies he retained his desire of being useful to the last of his life in seventeen eighty eight his increasing infirmities compelled him to retire from public office his complaints continued and he suffered very severely from his sickness he still however remained good-natured and cheerful was perfectly resigned to his situation acknowledging the justice and kindness of that being who had seen fit that he should be thus afflicted on the seventeenth of april seventeen ninety about eleven o'clock at night dr franklin quietly expired he had reached an honoured and happy old age from small beginnings by a uniform course of prudence and honesty he had raised himself to high station wealth and distinction in considering the character of franklin we perceive that the most marked trait was his habit of economy by economy we do not mean merely care in gaining and keeping of his money we mean care of time of labour frugality industry system method in all his business to this we may add economy of his health avoiding all excess and unnecessary exposure his cheerfulness and good nature were also remarkable he was ever happy and entertaining his anecdotes and jests were always to the point and his manner of conversing and writing was at once pleasing and effective for his public services his country owes him her respect and gratitude while his philosophical discoveries have excited the admiration of the world his name will live with the names of the few great men who have conferred enduring benefits on mankind the following epitaph on himself was written by him many years previous to himself the body of benjamin franklin printer like the cover of an old book its contents torn out and stripped of its lettering and gilding here lies food for the worms yet the work itself shall not be lost for it will as he believed appear once more in a new and more beautiful edition correct and amended by the author End of chapter sixteen